Liberty and justice is for all, not some. Let's tell Roy Moore that real quick. Like, would you join me? Liberty, Liberty. And, justice. and justice for all, for all. not some. Hi guys, we're at the Liberty. steps of the Alabama Supreme Court building here to protest Judge Roy Moore's illegal orders. Just want to give you a view of what's going on around us. Here we are. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to have to stall a little bit because we don't, we don't have the crowd that we expected quite yet. Okay, where's me? It's a congregation of Tuscaloosa. What? The only time I officially register a judicial complaint against Roy Moore. Um, the instructions are very specific on these complaints. First and foremost, I need to be 100% sure that no one signs these complaint forms until you get in front of the notary. We do have a notary on hand who is willing to notarize these documents and complaint forms for free to get them registered. The instructions are on the form. Uh, under statements and accusations, we have a suggested text to go with. Thank you, darling. Get you all well, yeah, usually it comes right on to me, so I'm not used to having to. Um, <laughs> but we do, we do have. Got me. Thank you, darling. We do have suggested. Um, uh, information for the statements and accusation, uh, facts and allegations. Um, do not attach our copy to the form itself. Um, if you're going, if you're willing to go through the effort and you feel strongly enough about this, you're going to have to hand transcribe that into the form itself. We are not allowed to pre-fill out anything on these forms, but we have gone through and given you the facts and allegations that go with the supporting documentation, which we have already gone through the trouble of attaching for you on these forms. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that this is going to be a long and lengthy process. It's one of the reasons why our event is so long is to give everybody a chance to go ahead have this in their head right now participate in the movement together as a group while we're here and go ahead and register an official complaint against Judge Roy Moore because as, as we all know bullying and discrimination is not a ministerial duty Amen. taking people taking away people's civil rights is not a ministerial duty Amen. and as a judge you are to represent all the people Fairly and equally. Yeah. Um, that's the reason why we've done this. Um, I, I, unfortunately, I, I am going to ask you guys. You know, we 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 have done this on a shoestring and at the last minute, and out of our out, out of you know, pulled everything together with thumbtacks and screws and bubble gum. Um, we have got 50 copies of the complaint form. 
here with supporting documentation attached and ready to go. What I'm looking for is 50 people who are willing to take the long and labor laborious time to sit down, fill these complaint forms out, have them notarized in front of a legal notary, and have them registered today. Um, so I just wanted to get that quick announcement before we get started and get kicked off. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think we're all here. Matter of fact, you, you snuck in on me while I was yakking at folks. I saw you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got an awesome panel of speakers lined up for you. First, I'd like to go ahead. Come up here, darling. I'd like to introduce my co-host for today's event, my co-MC, Nick Morgan Moore, local comedian. Hello. Uh, I, I'm local to somewhere. Um, now I'm local to here, and it's my pleasure to be here with all of you. Uh, when I was planning on coming to visit the States, uh, marriage equality hadn't passed yet. And once it did, I was very happy for all of you that it is now a recognized right that all Americans who wish to be married, who are in love, have that right to go and do that. And then when I heard about this, I felt like I was in a time loop. Like I was in a time loop. I felt like I was in a time loop. You know, like a time loop? That's what I felt like. I felt like I was in a time loop. You know what time loop I actually want to get stuck in, though? That one in 2003 where Judge Roy Moore got kicked out. There we go. So it's my pleasure to be here with you today, and uh, we have some amazing speakers for you all. Yes, we do. That's right. And you know what? We're working today on the instant replay for 2003. Can I get a hangman? Hangman! That's right, honey. You know, nobody has a market on God, especially the good parts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, right here, right now, I'd like to go ahead and introduce to you our first speaker. Um, this gentleman has been personally affected by the behavior of Roy Moore. Um, I cannot begin to imagine the struggle that he has gone through. Um, he, were, he and his partner thought that they had everything covered. They had gone through all the extra loops that we had to go through before we could legally get married. They had done everything right. They had done what they were supposed to do. And it was not until after this man lost his life, the love of his life that he found out that the rug was being pulled up from underneath him and the man with his hands on the edge of the fringe was Roy Moore. If you would, please welcome to the stage, Paul Hard. Who'd have thought this is how the pieces fit? You and I shouldn't even try making sense of it. I forgot how we ever came this far. Seems we had reasons, but I don't know what they are. Blame it on my heart. Cause love moves in mysterious ways. It's always so surprising when love appears over the horizon. I love you for the rest of my days. And still it's a mystery how it ever came to be. Because it only proves love moves in mysterious ways. Amen. Now, I, I am not in good throat at all because of all the funk in the air. And I'm certainly that a lot of you could do a better job of that than I. But I think a lot of people here can attest to the fact that love is surprising. You don't look for it. It's something that happens. It sweeps you up. And that was what happened with me. Now, I have to tell you uh, a couple of stories that you may not have heard. Some of you have heard my story. You, you may uh, have heard how that David and I were married in, in May of 2011. And uh, shortly after that, just a month and uh, two months and two weeks, uh, David was killed in a tragic car accident on I-65 North while he was heading to work. He was an amazing man. A big red-headed bear. And... 
we were, he, he took me to Gatlinburg in, in, uh, around Valentine's Day a few years ago. And he proposed to me there. Now, don't get too excited because that was probably one of six times that I said no. <laughs> and we had a great time. It was beautiful. The snow was falling and we were walking through the woods up there and just enjoying the beauty of God's creation. And as we're walking along and just looking, because we don't get that kind of snow in Alabama. And, and so we're looking and David looked up at some of the snow and the trees and his feet shot completely out from under him and he landed in the snow on his back. And I said, oh, baby, are you okay? He said, I'm fine. I said, don't move. He said, no, I'm fine. I said, no, no, don't move. This is a great picture. Tell you where we are. <laughs> He, uh, he used to say, and he actually put this on some of our wedding stuff, love is finding that one person that you want to annoy the rest of your life. <laughs> and he was great at it. And he was that one person. I had a, uh, had a student ask me a while back, and they were looking, I guess they're looking for wisdom, I'm not sure. They said, how did you know? And I said... Well, I guess I knew when one of my good friends that after six years of us being together and I said, I don't know about marrying him, it's, it's a little sudden. <laughs> and they said, honey, you are married. You just don't want to admit it. And I started thinking, he's the last face that I want to see at night before I go to bed. He's the first face that I want to see in the morning. When I'm getting on a plane and flying somewhere, He's the last person that I wanted to be in touch with to say, I'm on my way. Be praying for me. Be thinking about me. And when I landed, the first person I wanted to talk to was David. And all through the day, whether he was at work or I was at work or both of us were at work, when something came up that I wanted to spend that moment with him, I was texting, I was calling all through the day. So how do you know? You start realizing that this is the person that my life is bonded to and making it legal is just the next step so walking out onto a beach at marconi beach in massachusetts and saying i do was probably one of the easiest things to do after that let me share with you a little bit of an unknown part of my story some of you know how i was blocked at the emergency room and not allowed to see my husband what you don't know is that those were good people. No one there was there to hurt me. These are healers. And in the way that it is kind of played up in the press, some things get lost. And one of the things that was lost was is that when I was finally allowed to see my husband, the nurse, orderly, I don't know what their position was. These days you see somebody in scrubs, you just don't know. And uh, the person behind the counter looked at me with a look of anguish and said, I am so sorry. I would have let you go in there if I could have. And the fact of the matter is that laws like that hijack the good, kind hearts of people. Yes. Right. Now you want to talk about a higher authority. A law was broken that day. A law that I saw broken on the face of that person, that against the law of their heart, the law of mercy and compassion that they had within them, they felt that they had to stand in my way as my husband lay there. So a higher law was broken. And if you wish to appeal to a higher authority, if you feel that you are not bound by the Supreme Court of these United States, then I appeal to a higher authority than that. The law of your heart, the yeah. law of compassion, the law of mercy, the law of grace that says we don't have to treat another human being with disrespect or unkindness or bigotry because within ourselves, we know that there is a law that is written in the heavens that says do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yeah. Yeah. If you wish to appeal to a higher law, then appeal to the law of love. And for God's sake, let's not let something like this happen to another human being. Thank you for being here today.
everyone, that was Paul Hard. He's a personal friend and an amazing human being, and we all feel for you, and we all love you. Just quickly before we move on to our next speaker, there is free coffee at the Montgomery Humanist table over here. We're not charging. Go on, get a cup, heat up, and uh, we'll move right along to the next speaker. The next speaker is a reverend from the, Uni from the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Tuscaloosa. His name is Fred Hammond. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you for your story. Unfortunately, it is a story that is repeated way too many times. Yes. Way too many hearts have been hurt by this ban that is continually thrown in our faces. I'm a minister of a minority faith in Alabama. Unitarian Universalists are not a Christian faith. So when a judge says that their faith is superior and their rules and their doctrine must be honored above all other faiths, that goes against our founding parents of this nation who wrote that Congress shall make no law regarding preferential treatment of religion. Amen. No law. No law. I don't expect other people of other faith to agree with my faith, to agree with, with what I believe personally. But I also don't expect for their beliefs to be imposed on my faith. Make it plain. I don't expect for my faith to be imposed on anybody else's faith. Thank you. Faith is of the heart. It is what drives us individually. It is personal. It is developed within ourselves. So to have a group of people, in this case, a conservative group of people who have a very narrow view of what is true and not true, to tell me that I can't love a person of my choice, that I can't choose to marry who I love because it violates their faith, that very act, that very statement violates my faith of who I am as a Unitarian Universalist. It violates the ability to have the freedom of religious expression. And that happens every day in Alabama. Not just on this issue, but on every issue. We're told no, you can't do that because it violates my faith. You can't do this because it violates my faith. You can't have an abortion. You can't do, you can't do that. You can't do other things. You can't use marijuana because it violates my faith of intoxication. You can't do... Can't read Harry Potter. You can't read Harry Potter. <laughs> because why? It violates your faith? Then don't read Harry Potter. And if you don't want to marry somebody of the same gender, then don't! But religious freedom states that I have the ability to practice my faith and to have my faith honored by the law of the land. This nation was founded on the principle of freedom and we need to continually reinforce that that freedom is for all people. Amen. Not just for 
Christians, not just for a minority set of Christians. Right. Make it plain now. Because many of you here are, are Christians. I'm assuming that, but many, you know, maybe I shouldn't assume that. But I'm assuming that many of us here are Christians. And so, your faith needs to be honored. Your faith needs to be respected by the law of the land. And when the ban was struck down as unconstitutional, it meant that your faith was right. being honored. Your truth was being honored. Your inherent worth and dignity was being recognized for who you are as people of this nation. We need to send a message, not just by getting rid of Roy Moore, and he needs to be gotten rid of. Amen. He needs to go because he is violating the constitution of this country. Yes, make it plain now. <laughs> he is, he is, he needs to be not just gotten rid of, he needs to be disbarred and not allowed to practice law any longer because Amen. he is, he is violating the very oath that he took as, as a lawyer, as a judge. He is violating his own oath. Yes. He is violating his own creed that he swore to uphold. And he needs to be held accountable for that. He needs to be held accountable to the people of this nation that he is going to uphold the law, not his personal beliefs. His personal beliefs he can take to his church and he can preach those there and be honored there but not in the public arena. Amen. It is important. It is important for our faith to be honored and for our humanity to be honored and for our love to be honored. It is important that we honor each other's inherent worth and dignity. Yes. And that we do it with our own faith. And we do it with our own dignity. And we work to make sure that our freedoms are guaranteed for all. For every person who wishes to be married in this land regardless of who they love. That love, as Paul mentioned earlier, is a higher law. It is a supreme law because it governs our hearts. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Fred. Um, and, and you are right. There are many Christians here. Can I get a shout out from the Christians here? Yes, As a member of the Episcopal Church myself, I remember going to Sunday school. Do y'all remember going to Sunday school? Yes. Well, then let's repeat after me. Let's remind Roy Moore that one of the, the duties of a minister is to teach their congregation to love thy neighbor as thyself. 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 Yes. Now, this time, ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to introduce another member of the clergy to, our, to, um, to the stage. If you would, please welcome for me, from the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Montgomery, Alabama, give a warm welcome and a big round of applause for Reverend Lynn Hopkins. All right, How's, there we go.
I am, like Thread, a Unitarian Universalist. He and I are both members of a tradition. Unitarians and Universalists were established early in the history of this country before it was a country as people like the Baptists who came here seeking religious freedom from church hierarchy, who came here looking for a space in which all people are free to worship the God that they find to be real. Yeah. Unitarians and Universalists have established themselves in history as a people who respect the Christian tradition and the Christian scripture. That is to say, we take it seriously rather than literally, because you cannot do both. All language, all translation is interpretation. If you accept that the initial writers of the scripture received word directly from God, more power to you. That's not what you're reading. If you believe that everyone who translated the scriptures from the original many languages into Greek and Latin and English, and more modern English, if you believe that every one of those people had the hand of God upon them, more power to you. But nonetheless, all translation is interpretation. If you have read your Bible, then you know that reading the same passage one time speaks differently to you from reading it another time. That is the power of the living text. So I am here today to stand up as a follower of Jesus for the teachings and the love and the compassion of Jesus against the scoundrels and liars and hypocrites who would use his name to oppress people. You are likely aware, if you were raised in any church environment, you are likely aware that Jesus is not recorded as having made any statement regarding homosexuality. Yep. Most of us realize that the idea of sexual orientation didn't even exist in human science until the 19th century. So while there were acts of same-sex contact, there was no notion that people had same-sex attraction. So naturally, the people in Jesus' day thought that was bizarre and unnatural. We know better today, and God has always known better. Yes. <laughs> Now, what we do know that Jesus is on record as addressing is the act of some people, in particular religious leaders, conservative religious forces, calling out the personal and sexual sin of others. There is a passage in Luke that captures Jesus' view of this behavior very clearly. And you may remember, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And when they dispersed, he asked her, does anyone condemn you? And then he concluded, and neither do I. That's the Jesus I know. I honor the humanists. I love my humanists and I got a bunch of them in my congregation. Because like Jesus and all the major prophets, we don't teach a particular creed. 
The word talks about behavior, how we love one another and respect one another, and that's what we teach and strive to practice. And I understand how people in today's society would be so embittered and driven from the church because those Pharisees, those snakes that Jesus called out so long ago are among us today. But thanks be to God, the truth remains. Yes. I was Reverend Lynn Hopkins from the Unitarian Universalist Church of Montgomery. She's actually my reverend. I'm one of those humanists he was talking about. Thank you so much. <laughs> I just want to announce that at the end of this meeting, we're going to have a mass wedding. So anyone who would like to stick around and participate, then please do stick around and participate. <laughs> you know, when they passed marriage equality, I was so happy for all of you, but I was a little bit sad that I didn't get to participate in any of these really fun rallies. So I'm very happy to be here today, celebrating with all of you. You know, it got me thinking, how far can Judge Moore turn back the clock so that there's some other parties that I can join in on? <laughs> can he decide that we didn't actually go to the moon in 1969 so we can have a moon landing party? Or can he kick it back to when we all had those really fun wigs and rejoin the British Empire so we can all go and throw tea in the river? Because that sounds like fun. I did hear there's another tea party going on now, but it doesn't seem anywhere near as fun. <laughs> but I'm happy to be here with you today. And I'd like to announce our next speaker is Chuck Miller, who is the Regional Director of the American Atheists. So, they put the atheist up right after all the ministers. <laughs> wow, how do I follow that? <laughs> so, I'm standing here today as an ally. I'm a heterosexual man. I've been married for 35 years. And for 34 years, it was a privilege. It was a privilege because not everyone had the right to marry who they chose. And I'm here today because human rights are human rights. Yeah. Yeah. Play it now. Marriage yeah. rights are human rights. Yeah. And I'm here to speak out against Roy Moore. Roy Moore needs to be removed. Roy Moore has supreme contempt for the law in America. He has contempt for the law. He has contempt for the court. He has contempt for the Constitution, he has contempt for you, and he has contempt for me. Right. A man like Roy Moore may not be taking away your rights today. He's not taking away my rights today, although I'm sure he would like to. And if he's not taking away your rights today, he'll take them away tomorrow. Right. Anytime you come up to a moral question that disagrees with Roy Moore's private interpretation of his Bible, he'll take them away. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Are you married to a divorced person? He's, he can pull scripture out right. and, and tell you that's, that's adultery and, and you're not legally married. He'll do that. He'll burn books. He might even burn people. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't laugh. I mean, these don't, don't, don't laugh. We're we're getting to that. When someone uses his interpretation of the law and sets himself above the entire government, that's tyranny. Yes. And when they use religion as their justification, real law in Alabama. Roy Moore is your man. And it's not just Roy Moore. Roy Moore is just a symptom of what's wrong with so much of our political leadership. Amen. Our political leadership in Alabama put him back in the court after he had been justly removed because of his contempt. I blame the political leadership of Alabama, and they're all culpable. They're all 
all equally culpable with Roy Moore. Yes, make it plain. <laughs> and the cure for that is reform. This state needs a new constitution. Amen. This state needs a new constitution, yeah. and it needs to remove. Now I'm going to. Sorry, it needs to remove Roy Moore. Yeah. Yeah. And it needs to remove straight ticket voting, yeah. because if it wasn't for the leadership in this state and straight ticket voting, Roy Moore would be gone. The cure is to get out and vote. Yes. Every one of us needs to vote. I want to see I want to see a voter turnout above 50% in the next election. That's what we get. That means 25% of the people in this state, a clear minority, control the government. Yes. It's a it's a minority. And there is a majority represented here. They don't understand that, but it is a human majority. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. And Chuck is right. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one further action that you can take today. If you don't feel like taking the time to fill out the long, drawn-out judicial complaint forms that we have available for you over on the table that are ready to be notarized by a free notary, you can do one other thing. And it's just as simple as participating in the American governmental system. You can vote! You can vote for someone besides Roy Moore. You can yes. vote for a better Alabama, and you can vote for a better America. Amen. At this time, speaking of a woman who's been working for a better America for quite so many years, I've had the privilege of working with her down at an event in Indothan this last year. She is an amazing speaker. I cannot wait right here and right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome to the stage activist and international peace walker representing the Human Rights Campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Miss Audra Scott Williams. You know, I think we all need to just kind of look around. Uh, whenever I talk, I say it's really important for us to know who we're standing with and who is not here because we carry both of those on our shoulders. I work for, uh, actually I'm a global trustee for an organization called the United Religions Initiative, among other things. And in, with the United Religions, uh, Religions Initiative, we work to end religiously motivated violence. And what we see right here is religiously motivated violence yes, against is. people who are same gender loving, against people who have to go through what Paul did because of statues that really are irrelevant to the soul of a man, the soul of a woman, the soul of a child. I saw a sign earlier uh, with Audrey Lord on it. I don't know if she's still here. And it made me remember a quote by Audrey Lord, and it is that it is not our differences that divide us. It is our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences. You know, we talk about God in so many different ways. You know, I'm, I'm, I walk, walk a Christian path, I walk an indigenous path, I do a lot of globalization, global work for indigenous rights as well, many, many different fronts. And what I see for all of us is that if we can't accept the differences and we see those differences as what divides us and keeps us separate. We cannot have liberty for anybody. None of us are free until all of us are free. Amen. And so standing here today, I lift up the beauty and grace of who we are as LGBT people all over this country and all over the world. Karen and I as a couple, we've been walking together for freedoms for people for all kinds of issues. We've walked around the world, three and a half years it took us. We went in countries where we could have been killed because we were a same gender loving couple. And the women would take us aside and say, here your sisters. And we didn't get it at first. And then they'd say again, no, if anyone asks you, you're sisters. 
And it took a long time to understand what the sisterhood was saying to us. And that was that we see you, we understand you, we love you, and we want to protect you. And so we must stand together in all the many ways that it takes for us to uphold and uplift our human family. As same gender loving people, I remember in Africa where one of the tribes said that we were the uh, twin spirits and we were actually the keepers of the sacred messages because we could see everything from both sides. Now how about that? What a gift that brings to decision making about our humanity. And so today I stand, I stand for who we are a loving people that are a gift. It is our diversity that makes us special. It is human diversity that makes us that beautiful garden that has all the colors of the rainbow, that has all the textures, that looks so many different ways depending on how the sun shines. That's the gift of who we are as a human family. And so when Roy Moore says whatever he wants to say, you know, I think what we hold inside of us is so much stronger and so much bigger that it's just an irritation. And we're going to see that what we hold is going to just have that irritation go away. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not naive. As I said, I've walked around the world. I understand what it means to put your feet to any cause. And that's what we're doing here, putting our foot to the cause. And I won't exactly, I won't explain what I really mean by that. But putting our foot to the cause means that we're standing up for our rights as human beings to say no more taking away of the freedoms that we've worked so hard to achieve. As an LGBT community, we stand on solid ground, understanding that the faith and wisdom of the creator that made us exactly who we are is much bigger than anybody's interpretation coming from any, any faith-based tradition yes. and we stand in that knowing that the God we serve serves us and lifts us up and we will see Roy Moore gone. I believe that firmly. Yeah. Yeah. And so again, I just say as I look around, I'm very proud to be here with you. My heart is open and it brings us all in as I'm sure you do. I'll be your standing stone and I'll stand by you because I know you've got my back and we're gonna see Alabama change. Yes. We are, yes, it's we inevitable. Are. Alabama's awakening and we are part of that. You know, as a child, I remember in the civil rights movement and, and much of the activity and planning in our community took place in my backyard. I was a little girl running around. I didn't understand it, but I knew the change was coming. You know, and so I'm standing here on this precipice right now and I'm saying, I feel it, change is coming, it's already happened. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm standing for that because that's the source of my power. That's the source of our power to see Alabama come all the way through. Our rights are preserved and stand on solid ground. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Audra. Um, ladies and gentlemen, at this time I'd like to pause real quick. We've got a lot of media people here who took their time out today to come and be a part of history here in Alabama one more time. I'd like to give a shout out to all the local media that have come out here. Y'all give them a round of applause. You know, and I drove today from Dothan, Alabama. I didn't think anybody else was going to be here, but one of the reasons I'm shouting out to the media right now is I'd like to thank this man right here. Y'all give a shout out to Ken Curtis, who drove two hours from Dothan, Alabama, to stand here today and watch and be witness. This is what we need, ladies and gentlemen. We need to interact with each other. We need to come out of our clubs act clean, classy, and dignified, and be decent people that we can respect inside of our own community and outside of our own community. Manners matter, ladies and gentlemen. Can I get an amen? Amen! I don't know about y'all, but my mama taught me that when you show respect for someone else, you show respect for yourself. Yeah. I'm sorry, Warren Moore doesn't respect himself. Yeah, me too. But right here, right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and keep our speaker list going and rolling as we welcome to the stage the founder and executive director of Free to Be Anti-Violence Organization, Mr. James Robinson. Yeah. 
Give it up. Thank you. I am proud and honored to be here as a native homosexual of Alabama. And I am privileged to live in a nation where we can gather and freely and safely talk about our values. I am tired of hearing people in this building and this building up the street represent my Alabama values because they do not. I'm about as Alabama as Alabama can be, and my values are values of love and compassion. Yes. This morning, a group of us left Alabama's Free to Be LGBTQ Resource Center in Huntsville in what we call the Free to Be Express. So let me give a shout out to our people from Huntsville and everybody else here from North Alabama. We then stopped in Birmingham at our Free to Be office in Birmingham and picked up our intern from Tuscaloosa. And we had our rainbow flags flying on our Free to Be Express all the way down representing from Huntsville. And it was a great morning. Uh, last, the, the other day, we were on the streets in downtown Huntsville protesting. We were in our office and we got notification after Roy Moore spewed his latest bit of nonsense that a couple at the Madison County Courthouse had been denied a marriage license. I am proud to say that in about 30 minutes, we had a group of people down there representing equality and social justice. We did not want to do that because Judge Tommy Ragland's office had been one of the probate judge's office in Alabama that led the way back on February 9, 2015 on a truly historic day. But one couple was denied, and so we hit the streets. And we have to keep doing that. We have to stand up for everyone's rights, whether they are gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, asexual, agender, pansexual, polyamorous, and even heterosexual. We have to stand up for everyone when our rights are violated. I am so proud that my life has changed, and I, now I am a public homosexual figure who has the privilege of working full-time for you every day of my life and I could not be more honored. We work to end violence while advocating for the human and civil rights of sexual and gender minorities and we work every day to build a compassionate and inclusive society where everyone is free to express themselves, everyone is free to love, and I now have the vision of being married myself someday to a man that I love, and I could not be happier, and I could not be prouder to be here, and thank you, and let's get Roy Moore out of this public office and any other public office that he may any day hope to hold. Our next speaker's name is Brett Jones. He is an author and he was a Navy SEAL. He's a veteran. Please give him a round of applause. First, I would like to uh, thank everyone involved in getting me here today. I really appreciate that. So, as I recall, it was a relatively peaceful Iraqi night until we heard a radio call from our brothers who were getting lit the hell up on route Irish. Hearing the urgency in their voices, we quickly put on our gear, grabbed our weapons, and ran towards our armored vehicles, which were about 300 yards away. Just as we ran outside, mortars and rockets started raining in with ear-splitting explosions, followed by the cracking sounds of bullets flying just over our heads and all around us. That base was under attack. As we started running through the hail of the tracer illuminated gunfire, we found cover behind a brick wall just 50 yards away from those vehicles. The machine gun fire was constant and heavy, and those 50 yards might as well have been 100 miles away. I was scared. In that moment of safety, behind that perfectly placed wall, I believe God came to me. And he gave me a feeling of peace, followed by an extreme sense of urgency, almost as if to say, go, go, Brett, go now. Somehow we made it to those vehicles and did the work that we were trained to do, and not one American was killed there that night. 
My 14-year-old son and I did some math the other day. Because when it comes to math, it turns out I need all the help that I can get. In the last 22 years of serving my country, more than half of that time has been spent overseas, and the majority of that time has been spent in some of the most corrupt, violent, and dangerous places that this planet has to offer. Places like Iraq, Afghanistan, Kosovo, and Pakistan, just to name a few. Places where little girls are shot or executed for going to school. Places where women have acid thrown in their faces for leaving abusive husbands. Places where homosexuals are thrown from rooftops. Places where religious doctrine dictates the law. Please understand, and God knows how important this is to me, our spiritual and personal beliefs are incredibly sacred. I mean, it's freedom. It's what my brothers and our forefathers fought and died for. But one man's personal beliefs has no place manipulating or confusing the laws of an entire state, especially here in the great state of Alabama. The love. The love that I have for my family is the most powerful truth that I have ever known. And as I stand here and I look out over this gathering, I see mothers and fathers, wives and husbands, boyfriends and girlfriends, and individuals with desires and dreams that should never be extracted because of who they are as human beings. The Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court is a steward. They serve all people as an administrative head of the state's judicial system. It is not, it is not a place for political, to grandstand for political gain. It is not a place for bigotry, biasness, or prejudices, and it is certainly not a place to repeatedly shame and humiliate and embarrass the hardworking people of Alabama on a national level. I don't know about you, but I'm angry, and righteously so. Since the Civil War, Alabama has suffered and went through great lengths to move beyond an archaic stereotype. All right. And I'll be damned if I'm going to stand idly by and watch as one man tries to throw us back into an era that we have long since put behind us. Amen. I'm with you. In closing, I would like to be as clear as I possibly can. There is no place for Roy Moore in any secular office. There is no place for Roy Moore in any state government office. All right. All right. Alabama, as our motto declares, we dare defend our rights, even if it must be against one of our own. Thank you and God bless the great state of Alabama. While we're on our chance, I just want to remind everybody that's here, and especially the man that's sitting up in the top of this building, I want y'all to give one more cheer for Roy Moore, because while he would like to remind his judges of his their ministerial duties, I would like to remind Judge Moore of his ministerial duties one more time. So if you would, please repeat after me. Sinners hate, God does not. 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 Yes! Our next speaker is an activist, an international peace walker, and has represented the Human Rights Campaign. Her name is Karen Hunter Watson. It's a privilege to be here with all of you with all of us here together standing for what we know is right. I had the privilege of marrying the first same-sex couple here in the state of Alabama, and it was such an honor for me as a same loving gender person with my partner, Audrey Scott Williams. We have been traveling around the world for peace since the year 2000. 
We have been standing for what's right for all people. And all people is all of us. That's right. For we are all made in the direct image of a creator that loves us. And love is the key word here today. When you love, you can't hate. When you love, you have the right to be able to marry whom you want, to be with whom you want, and love whom you want. That's what it's all about. And that's what we're here today to say, this is our privilege. It has been given to us first by God. And I say that because I know God loves me. Yes. I know God loves me just the way I am. Yes. I know she is always here with me, yes. doing all of those things that are through me as I come forward and say, I am the face of the divine supreme being that is here in this earth, right here, right now, standing for what I know is right. Yes. And that's what's right. Love is the answer. Love is the answer, not hate. And I stand here for love, for peace. This is what we walked for when we were in, uh, not here in the United States. And our president became the president, President Obama. It was such an honor for me to be able to have seen that happen. It was an honor for me to see that we as LBGTQ people have the right to marry whom we want. And no one, no mortal person has the right to say anything other than that. Nobody has that right because God has said, Jesus himself said, the greatest commandment of all is love. That takes over everything else. And that's what I stand on. That's what we have to stand on. We can do this and we can do this. We can do it together. For together we do stand, but divided we fall. So I'm grateful to be a part of this great group of people, my brothers and sisters, because you're all a part of me, for I'm a part one with you. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here and say, no more, no more, no more, no more, no more. That's what we have to say, because God has said, I love you just the way you are. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to introduce a woman who is not only our speaker, she was one of our organizers. She has been an amazing ball of energy while we were pulling this thing together. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please welcome to the stage founder and president of the Montgomery Humanists, the lovely and beautiful Miss Sandy Anderson. What else I can say that hasn't already been said? There are only so many ways to um, to explain why this order is so wrong and why Roy Moore needs to go. But um, for those of you way back there who might be on the wrong side of this issue, um, I'd like to read for you a portion of our Bill of Rights. The First Amendment. Maybe you only read part of it. Um, <laughs> Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. See, you only read that prohibiting thing. It's about all of it. You cannot make a law respecting the establishment of a religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. <laughs> and there's more or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people to peacefully assemble yeah, yeah. and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Yeah. I've got a grievance. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, we all do. So here's the mission statement though from uh, the Foundation for Moral Laws website. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. Oh, yes. um, Foundation for Moral Law. They like to use the hashtag FML. I'm not sure they know what that means. <laughs> the Foundation for Moral Law exists to restore the knowledge of God in law and government and to acknowledge and defend the truth that man is endowed with rights, not by fellow man, but by God. 
Now that first part has me a little confused. Roy Moore founded this organization called the Foundation for Moral Law. This is a 501c3 tax exempt organization. They're a nonprofit and their sole mission is literally to violate the Constitution yes. and our yes. rights. Yes. So, um, not moral or law. No. So, Roy Moore founded this nonprofit and he served as president for a number of years. Um, but on their website, it says something about his ethics and that when he took office, he stepped aside because he's so ethical that he had a conflict yeah. with serving both. Yeah. And I would argue that he is still serving both organizations. Um, his wife now runs the organization and she spoke at a rally last year where she was arguing against allowing all of us the right to marry and she said something about judicial ethics that her husband has judicial ethics and that's why he wasn't at the rally um i think ethics might mean something different to them yeah and so i was asked by the media what i want one more to do Aside from resigning, I think maybe if he could read the Constitution and pick up a dictionary. Yeah. Um, has anyone been to our Facebook event page today? <laughs> We've had some trolls. One of the words that I saw used over and over again was the word persecution. Does that mean something different than what it says in the dictionary? Because I fail to realize how someone else gaining rights that you've always had is some kind of persecution of you. Yeah. Um, I am a humanist. I am a secular individual. I represent Montgomery Humanists, um, and we're an educational nonprofit. Um, the other point that I'd like to make for Roy Moore, not for you all, you all already know this, is that the Supreme Court of the United States granted the right to marry to all Americans. And um, you all know that the Confederacy lost, right? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. I know that the flag just came down last year, but we are still part of America. And as Americans, we have those rights that are granted to us by the federal court systems. Yes. Um, the First Amendment, again, separation of church and state. As I said, it protects your right to worship, your right to acknowledge God, your right to believe in whatever you want to believe. But you don't have the right to force those beliefs on others. That's right. And that's the other part of the First Amendment. If we allow Roy Moore to force his personal beliefs on us, um, we're going to have to allow anyone to put their personal beliefs into law, and that can't happen. Yes, thank you. Let me give you an example. I'm a pescatarian. Does anyone know what that is? Yes. A vegetarian who eats fish? Um, that's my personal belief. I don't believe in eating meat. But if I was in office and I made a law or put out an order that cheeseburgers are illegal, you all would know that was wrong, right? And I think even even Roy Moore would know that is wrong. I, I hope. Um, I'm also a veteran. And I fought to defend this nation. I fought to defend the rights of all Americans, even those who live in Alabama. <laughs> Yes, thank you. And I would like to think that when a right is granted after years and years and years of struggle to individuals who should have had it to begin with, All right. yes. that we're allowed to still exercise that right even in Alabama. Yes. Yes. I want to see Alabama move Especially forward with Alabama. the rest of the nation, yes. and I refuse to let Roy Moore hold us back. Yes. Yes. He doesn't speak for me. Yes. He doesn't speak for all of you. He thinks he speaks for the state of Alabama. So my call to action for all of you is to vote him out. Vote all of them out. I think, I believe, 
that the majority of us want marriage equality in Alabama. Yes. Yes. But the majority of voters are keeping people like Roy Moore in office. And so that's what we need to do. We need to move forward. We need to vote better. Everybody register to vote and go and make those smart decisions and get these people out of office. Thank you. Thank you. That was Zandy Anderson. She's amazing and she's also my wife. But more than that, she is an activist who's been fighting for equality for a very long time. And uh, I think we should all thank her very much. And also, she, she helped put this together. So, a round of applause for Zandy. Come on. Just a couple of reminders. The, uh, the judicial complaint forms are available, so if anybody would like to make a, uh, an official judicial complaint, please meet us over there at the, uh, at the humanist table is where they're congregating. And again, our, uh, we will be having a wedding this afternoon. The couple's running a little bit late, as happens. Uh, so that's going to kick off at about 2.30. If anybody else was thinking about getting married today, you're welcome to come and uh, have a chat to us over that way as well. And uh, we look forward to meeting you. Before we move on to our final speaker, I just have a, uh, a small poem that I wrote. Thank you. Breaking the law. <laughs> In 2003, we showed you the door. Now, 13 years later, I just want to roar. Go work in a drugstore, or join the Peace Corps, or hop in a boat and use your oar to paddle offshore. But don't claim God is your mentor and say that now you're allowed to break the law. That's the behavior that we abhor. Is this what you stand for? Not the people, but the foundation for moral law. Just so that you can go and run for governor? <laughs> and you'll do anything to get it, we know, because you're a terrible Chief Justice. <laughs> Our final speaker of today is the Chairman for Equality Alabama out of Birmingham. And his name is Clifford Beach. Well, I'm a decent extemporaneous speaker, but when I do that, I follow rabbits. And we go all kinds of places where we don't need to be. So I wrote it out. I hope you don't mind that I read. Not at all. Um, I know they've made a couple of announcements. One of the things that I'm supposed to do if there are people here who would like to be married is to do that. So is there anyone here now? I know we have people coming later because that'll change what I've got to say to y'all, okay? I really had a feeling that this would be the situation here. Um, when when um, the Supreme Court made their ruling that finally made same-sex marriage legal nationwide. You know, we'd already had our first ruling here in February, and I was very fortunate that day to go to the Jefferson County Courthouse after being turned away at the Shelby County Courthouse, but go to the Jefferson County Courthouse and, um, and marry a couple. And there was a tremendous celebration that was happening at the courthouse at the time, and a lot of people got married. Well, when the, when the Supreme Court ruling happened, a lot of the same people went back to the courthouse to celebrate the Supreme Court ruling. But nobody wanted to get married. And one of the, the reporters came up and, and asked me, well, where are all the people who are getting married? It's legal now. And I said, well, the ones who had to get married, who were just have been dying to get married, did that in February. And now that it's legal, and now that it's possible, to not worry about what's going to happen tomorrow and knowing that they don't have to just sneak in under the wire in case something like Roy Moore happens to them again, they're planning their weddings and they're getting married in the places where they want to get married. And isn't that a fantastic thing? Yes, it is. Isn't that a fantastic thing? So back to what's written on the sheet of paper here. Um, when I, was, uh, when I was planning what I wanted to say, I thought like Zandy did, that by the time I got up to speak, everything that needs to be said would already have been said. It's like we have a, a tremendous panel up here, and, and uh, I have to tell you that I, that I am very honored and quite honestly humbled to be in, in the company of the people that are here. Um, 
We've had people who have served our country. We have people who have, have fought the, um, the legal battle on our behalf. We have people who have stood up for, for the rights of others worldwide. And I'm just a guy in Birmingham who posts to a web page and tries to keep people informed. <laughs> so um, anyway, so the things that I thought would have already been said that would be that Justice Moore needs to abide by the law before he tries to adjudicate it. That Judge Moore needs to, that Judge Moore uses the despicable politics of hate for personal gain. That his latest attack is nothing more than a distraction from his son's problems. That he thinks that the more he plays the gay card, the more Alabamians will bankroll his foundation and by extension his personal checkbook. And that more is an embarrassment to Alabama. And more importantly, more important than that, he's an embarrassment to the Constitution that yes, he swore he to protect yeah. and defend. Yes, and to all of that, to all of that, I have to say, you're right. He is despicable, at least his politics are. He is an opportunist. He's a political manipulator. And for all those reasons we've been saying all day long, no more. No more. So, since everything that needs to be said about him has already been said, I think what I want to do is just give you a quick report from the trenches about the reality of marriage equality in Alabama, at least my reality. Ron Mathis is my partner of 18 years. He can't be here today, but he's my partner of 18 years, one month, and six days. I know that it's so exactly because exactly one month and six days ago, I proposed to him on our anniversary. I'm very proud now to not call him my partner, to no longer have to call him my partner, but to call him my fiance. You know, see, there's power in words. After calling ourselves, after calling ourselves husbands for many, many years, what a joy to be able to use that word fiance legitimately. And soon we'll be able to call ourselves husbands rightly, legally, without any asterisks, without any footnotes or, quote, or air quotes. Because the United States Supreme Court has ruled, like so many lower courts before them, and as Judge Grenade ruled here in Alabama, that marriage is a fundamental right of citizenship, and as such is protected under the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution, which guarantees due process and equal application of the law to everyone, whether you're gay or straight. Amen. Since Christmas, Ron and I have been planning our own wedding, so that's how I kind of know how I had a feeling that um, people weren't going to be jumping at the chance to get married on the, on the courthouse steps this, this afternoon. But um, like many couples, we were torn between going big and grand or keeping it sweet and simple. We know we want our families and closest friends to be there. We know we want the ceremony to be outside. We've got an idea of a mountain view. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And we know we want it to be in May, manly May. We'll leave June to the June brides, right? So we're shopping for a place, and honestly, I was a little apprehensive about how we were going to be treated. You know, there's been so much chatter over the last year about bakers and, and photographers who, who don't want to serve gay couples, right? And with all the noise that the guy behind us has been spewing in recent days, who knew what we were going to run into? Can I tell you that we could not have had a nicer experience here in Alabama? and the state Roy Moore considers his own, people are treating us beautifully 100% of the time. At every venue, Alabamians don't seem to care that we're two men getting married. And I'm not just talking about people who are very politely gritting their teeth and doing their job whether they like it or not. No, these people are celebrating us. We've had people literally hold our hands and sincerely congratulate us. We had one girl nearly cry. I mean, it was... I'll go off. I'll go off text just for a second. What I did propose to Ron, I did it in a public setting. You probably think since he's up here in the microphone, he's pretty good at, at public settings and all that kind of thing. It's not really my thing. I, I got to tell you, it's not really my thing. But it just had to work out that way. And um, I was telling the story of how Ron and I met and and how we got together. And um, in that. And the, the first day that we met, he told me no when I asked him if, if I should just leave him alone. 
because I thought I was kind of pestering him and that he wasn't interested. He said no. And I said, and then when I proposed to him, I said, that was the sweetest no I ever got in my life. <laughs> and today, I'd like to get a yes. And I went down on my knee and everybody gasped. And um, I thought, where do you think this story was going, people? But, uh, <laughs> but he did say yes, and we were proposed, um, we were engaged, and then, thank you, and then right after that, this lady who I'd never known before in my entire life, never met her before in my entire life, came up and she gave both of us this huge hug, just an enormous hug, and she was crying. And I just said, are you really crying for us? And she said, that's the sweetest thing I ever saw in my life. <laughs> anyway. That's the kind of reaction that we're getting everywhere we turn. You know, whether it's been the city of Birmingham employees, state of Alabama workers, state of Alabama workers, really, and private venue managers, venue managers they've all gone above and beyond our expectations. And, I, and I, I, I'd like to give just a special shout out. I'm not supposed to do commercials. Maybe I am. I don't know. Um, just to Amanda Baker of, of Aldridge Botanical Gardens in Hoover, if you have some long range planning to do for a wedding, Aldridge Gardens and Hoover is a good place to go. But, and I say that because they are booked. We, had, we wanted to, be, to, get, to get married there and they are booked out. But Amanda took more than an hour and a half of her time, not only to, uh, to discuss the venue, but to give us advice on catering, photographers, and all these kind of things. This kind of um, going above and beyond is, is something that comes from the heart and, and, it, and it's very gratifying. And it's not just the public and commercial venues that are welcoming. While some people, some people feel very free to speak for the church and to claim to know God's will regarding same-sex marriages, the Presbyterians, the Episcopalians, the Reformed Jews, some Methodists, even some Baptists, even some Baptists are happily marrying same-sex couples. And it's happening every month maybe every week, right here in Alabama. This is the real Alabama. This is the Alabama that knows that love is love. That man up there says that marriage isn't about love. In his mind, if marriage was about love, listen to this. Get a wind right now. If marriage was about love, his wife, and this is according directly to, to Roy Moore, if marriage was about love, I keep coming back to that, if marriage was about love, what an crazy thing to even say out loud. His wife could marry her horses because she loves her horses. This is Roy Moore's way of thinking about marriage. Okay? Well, you know, I love my dogs. And I mean, I love my dogs. They're our kids, right? Ron's not here tonight, today because one of our dogs, 16 years old, is, is, had to go to the vet. We're going to have a claw amputated today. That's not fun. I love my dogs, they're like my kids, but I don't want to marry them. That, ma that man later said that his comments about animal love were no way meant to imply that same-sex marriage is bestial. But of course, that's exactly what he wanted to say. It's the politics of manipulation and hate, and he's a master of it. The thing is, real Alabama, the real Alabama doesn't buy it. He was thrown out of office with his tail between his legs once before, and it's time for it to happen again. So, exactly, no more, no more. At this point is when, if I, there was someone to marry, I was going to do it. But I want to leave you with one thing. I'm not the world's greatest reciter, but I'm going to read a poem to you. Because it's all about love. It's all about love. It's all about love. There's a poem by Maya Angelou. It's called Touched by an Angel. It's not an easy poem to read, but I'm going to give it my best shot. I hope I do it justice. It says, We unaccustomed courage, exiles from delight, live coiled in shells of loneliness until love leaves its high holy temple and comes into our sight to liberate us into life. Love arrives, and in its train come ecstasies, old memories of pleasure, ancient histories of pain. Yet, if we are bold, love strikes away the chains of fear from our souls. We are weaned from our timidity. In the flush of love's light, we dare to be brave. And suddenly we see that love costs all we ever will be and all we are. Yet it is only love 
that sets us free. Folks, those, that's my comments for today. I feel, I feel freer now than I ever have, and it's because in spite of other people's complaints and efforts to, to take away freedoms and to, de and to deny even the existence of our love, we are here, we are proud, and we know the truth of, of who we are and, and, and the love that guides us. And I just appreciate everybody being here, and I appreciate being invited to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, Clifford. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I, I would go on and like to announce that we have a wedding planned for 2 o'clock. Um, and at this time, um, what I'd really like for you guys to do, I know that the weather's been getting cold and like Roy Moore, the sun has not shined upon us all day long. So what I'd like for you guys to do is to remember that we're all family here and it's okay to get close and snuggle. So would you guys from the back, come on, let's move on up here a little closer to each other. This, um, this is what we need to do when we're not here. We need to start moving a little closer to each other. This is how we come together, ladies and gentlemen. Side by side sharing the warmth of each other's hearts against the cold wind of ignorance. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here today standing before you. I do not have a piece of costume jewelry on me. I do not have a bead or a sequin on my body. Because I am not here as a drag queen. I am not here as an entertainer. I am here as a free and equal citizen of Alabama. Each and every one citizen of this state deserves free and equal representation under the law. There is no this, that, or the other. We decided all about red, yellow, black, and white back when we was in Sunday school. They told me Jesus loves all the little children. Red and yellow, black and white, gay and straight, day and night, all are precious in his sight. Yes. Now, if you decide to take it upon yourself to go and shove hate and discrimination in the mouth of God, that is for you to answer for. That's right. yeah. Because the God that I know, the God who guides me, the God who has whispered in my ear and saved me from being attacked, the God who has whispered in my ear and saved me from being beaten on many occasions loves all of us, not some. Liberty and justice is for all, not some. Let's tell Roy more of that real quick. Like, would you join me? Liberty, Liberty. And, justice. and justice for all. For all. Not some. Not some. Liberty. Liberty. And justice. And justice. For all. For all. Not some. Not some. Liberty. Liberty. And justice. And justice. For all. For all. Not some. Not some. Those walls are thick one more time from the bottom of your soul. Liberty. Liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all, not some, not some. I got one more that I want to remind everybody about, especially Roy Moore. And I believe I'd like for the, I'd like for all of our speakers to stand with us and, and snuggle up. I know y'all are getting cold. We got a lot of faith ministers here. I want to be sure that they get their chance to be a part of this last chant because sinners hate God does not. Sinners hate, 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 God does not. If anybody had any questions as to why I was here, I think I'd just answer. <laughs> but right here, right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd, I'd like to go ahead and tell everybody, um, baby, can you give me a time check? Because I don't, I, I, I talk so much, I don't want to be sure that we haven't run over too far. Okay, uh, we're run on time and schedule. Ladies and gentlemen, 
um, before we, we break uh, for, for, the, for the wedding, um, I would like to take this personal opportunity to thank each and every one of our speakers who have come here and joined us today. Um, if you would, give a hand and a wave as I call your name. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to give it up for the currently struggling, for the enduring Mr. Paul Hart. Yeah. From the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Tuscaloosa, Mr. the Reverend Fred Hammond. From the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Montgomery, Reverend Lynn Hopkins. Regional Director for the American Atheists, Chuck Miller. Activist and International Peace Walker representing the Human Rights Campaign, Ms. Audra Scott Williams. Founder and Executive Director of Free to Be Anti-Violence Organization, Mr. James Robinson. The first openly United States gay seal, and I want to take this time to say again, thank you for your service, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And a man who deserves to be equally respected, not only as a citizen, but as a veteran of this country. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for Brett Jones. Woo! I'd also like for you to give a round, another round of applause for activists and international peace walker representing the human rights campaign. Also, Ms. Karen Hunter Willett Watson. The founder and president of the Montgomery Humanists and one of the organizers who's been helping bring this together along with myself and others. Y'all give it up for Ms. Zandy Anderson. The chairman of Equality Alabama, Birmingham. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Clifford Beach. And at this time, I do want to give a special shout out to some people that I've been working with for the last week. You know, a year ago, I said, all right, we're going to Montgomery. And they said, no. I said, what? <laughs> what do you mean we're not going to Montgomery? They said, Montgomery County is cooperating. <laughs> Sit still, Miss Ambrosia. Mind your manners. We're not here to upset people. We're here to bring people to our side. I said, I don't like it, but all right. <laughs> all right. Last Tuesday, when the news hit, hit the fan, Y'all know what I wanted to say, but when the news hit the fan, a friend of mine had posted this on Facebook and I responded back to him. Do you still think I'm crazy? Are you ready yet? And my dear friend and one of our organizers, Mr. Keith Ingram, y'all give it up for Keith. Come on up here, baby. This young man looked at me and said, girl, I'm putting on my shoes now. Are we going? Let's do this. And I said, I said, well, I'm kind of working right now. I got three children I'm watching and looking after. I can't go this second. He said, girl, hold on. And he reached out to this man. Ladies and gentlemen, give a hand for Chrissy. My name is Cherry. Yeah. Christopher. Christopher hopped on the page for Equality Wiregrass. And the next thing I knew, 15 minutes later, I had to take down a Facebook post. <laughs> I sure did. I sure did, because I'm not going to lie to y'all. When the fur news first hit the fan, I got mad. I got so mad because I've been saying, come on, let's go to Montgomery for a year. Didn't want nobody want to go. I was furious. And I put it out there. I guess it's time for me to give up. On Facebook, I openly said it's time for me to give up. I guess, you know, Alabama gays and lesbians just really want to lay down like a doormat for this man and just let him walk all over because I can't get nobody to stand up. And I want to thank each and every one of you here today for reaffirming my faith in my own community. I want to thank Keith and Chris, Mike Walker for the Montgomery Humanists, Ms. Andy Anderson, uh, Ms. Maya Raver from the Powerhouse, who's given us the chairs that we're sitting on here today, um, and, as well as HRC Alabama and Equality Alabama for reaching out and helping us make this happen, for providing the connections for our fabulous speakers today. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not over and we're not done yet. Um, uh, we just found some, we found, got a hold of some water for the coffee pot. Girl, you, you got enough for another round?
Okay, we're going to have just a little bit of music because I want you guys to stay, mingle, meet each other, shake each other's hands. We do this in church all the time, honey. I know it's shocking to find out that a drag queen goes to church. I don't wear makeup in front of Jesus, but I go. <laughs> No, no, no. Y'all don't have to thank me for anything. And I want y'all to know this from the bottom of my heart. I am here right now to thank each and every one of you that I see here. You made this possible. You made this happen. And I want each and every one of you here right now to attend the next movement. Go home. Tell your friends what they missed today. Because this is not an event for one city. This is not an event for one group. This is a movement. We have already we have already gone all the way to the Supreme Court and back again. And this movement is not over. It's not over. Let me say this again. Y'all say it with me. It's not over. 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 Because we still have to protect our jobs. We still have to protect our housing. We still have to protect each other and our children. We have to protect our own community and each other. Gay, straight, black, white, red, yellow, pink, polka dotted, or blue. It does not matter. All we are asking for is to be free and equal citizens under the law. And it's time for us to come together, just like we're doing right now. Sharing the warmth of our hearts. I don't know about y'all, but I don't feel as cold as I did a few minutes ago. Can I get amen? Amen! All right. Well, I want y'all to stick around for just a very few minutes. We have a wedding scheduled for Roy Moore to enjoy. And that's right. We're going to play a little bit of music so you guys can get a chance to, to reach out to each other, talk to each other for a few minutes, warm up, snuggle up. In 15 minutes, I believe we've got a couple that is willing to be met with on the church house steps right in front of Roy Moore. And I promise you don't want to miss it when that man peeks out the window and sees exactly what he don't want to. So y'all please stick around. We'll be right back.